Announced during the Nintendo Switch 2's big reveal, GameCube games are now officially added to the roster of classic titles available with a Nintendo Switch Online subscription. 24 years and 4 console generations on, Nintendo is finally able to tap into a truly rich, much beloved catalogue on its new platform. But what if I was to tell you that Nintendo has had official Wii emulation, essentially an overclocked GameCube in both CPU and GPU working for the last 8 years. Indeed, here it is in action from back in 2017, Nintendo's Wii emulator running on the Nvidia Shield TV, which of course used the very same Tegra X1 chipset as the Nintendo Switch. This was only for the Chinese market on Shield TV, where the four games released included The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Super Mario Galaxy, New Super Mario Bros. Wii and Punch-Out. In effect, we have the older Switch processor running an emulator capable of not just Wii games, but almost certainly GameCube too, as the architectures are so similar. Before we go into depth on what might have been, here's what we're getting on Switch 2. To start anyway, at least 10 GameCube titles will be available, each with the promise of enhanced resolutions, faster loading times, and even online play if there's a multiplayer mode. The games actually shown in the Nintendo Direct all hail from 2003 in their Western release and truly defined the system's incredible range. Firstly, there's F-Zero GX, still considered one of the all-time greats of a racing series that's sadly been absent in recent times. We have the iconic The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker in its original GameCube form. And finally, Soul Calibur 2, a third-party release from Namco with a pinch of Nintendo magic thanks to the inclusion of Link as a playable character. It's great news, and expands an already broad library of emulated ports on Nintendo's online service, ranging from NES to Game Boy to N64, where GameCube is of course the next logical addition. The only snag is that this GameCube back compat support is exclusive to just Nintendo Switch 2, meaning you'll have to make the hardware jump from your original Switch to access these games. So, why are we getting GameCube games now, and why only on Switch 2 hardware, rather than on the original Switch? To recap, these emulated Wii games on Shield were never released in the Western market. Rather, it was born out of a partnership between Nvidia and Nintendo following a deal to use Nvidia's Tegra X1 in Switch. The outcome being that Nintendo licensed this quartet of games as part of that exchange, to launch in the Chinese market alone on the Nvidia store. It was a collaboration between the companies, with Nvidia Lightspeed Studios handling core development, whose logo appears on the startup of each game. I covered these Shield versions when they first appeared, and must stress, it involves jumping through a fair few hoops to access. In the end, we imported an already set up Shield TV from China as a shortcut, and the results were, and still are, fascinating in light of what Switch 2 is offering. The bottom line is that all of these games run well, proving that not only GameCube, but more ambitious Wii emulation has been viable on Tegra X1 all this time. Better still, they weren't simple ISO dumps into an emulator. Rather, all four games were customised to the Shield hardware itself in several respects. Twilight Princess and Mario Galaxy, for example, run at a higher 1920x1404 resolution in widescreen, essentially scaling the horizontal axis by three times over the original Wii resolution of 480p. Texture assets of course remain the same as the originals, but in both cases, texture filtering received a noticeable boost to match the heightened clarity of the image. Some vector-based text elements even scaled up with this, resulting in a sharper font, using a translation to Chinese in this case. Most surprising of all though, is that the Shield version of Twilight Princess is something of a hybrid of the GameCube and Wii versions. 
Twilight Princess's development was of course led on GameCube, but its release coincided with a Nintendo Wii version in late 2006, making it a launch title for that system. The big change for the Wii version, if you'll remember, was that it mirrored the entire world, flipping it horizontally to have Link's sword animations on the right hand side and therefore integrate Wii Remote motion controls. Now the Nvidia Shield version undoes all of this, reverting it back to the GameCube world layout and also axing the Wii motion controls in favour of more traditional gamepad inputs. On the other hand, we keep the 16 to 9 widescreen view of the Wii version here, making it a real hybrid of both. There are a few limitations to these Nvidia Shield releases too. Firstly, in the case of Twilight Princess, the frame rate is locked at 30 frames per second. It is a stable 30 and falls in line with the Wii and GameCube originals, but never pushes beyond that cap. In Mario Galaxy's case, it guns for 60fps as with the Wii original, but with some one-frame dips and micro stutter en route, disrupting the experience more than is ideal. The key distinction to make here is that this emulation is built for an Android-based OS in Nvidia Shield, while Switch benefits from much lower GPU access to the Tegra X1 by using Nvidia's NVN graphics API. In theory, a proper Switch release might handle this with fewer dips, using an API that's more direct to metal, so to speak. Interestingly, on that note, looking at the official release of Mario Galaxy on Switch later in 2021 via the Mario 3D All-Stars collection, we got exactly that. The 3D All-Stars version pushed to 1080p in a similar way, improving the texture filtering, fonts, and even going further with a wholesale asset swap for Galaxy's pre-rendered videos. Between this and the light speed efforts on Shield, it is proof of concept that Tegra X1 is not only in the right ballpark hardware-wise, but that a working emulation layer has been available for quite some time. With all that in mind, let's jump back to what Nintendo is offering on Switch 2. The GameCube games are running in emulation with their own set of enhancements, starting with the resolution boost to 900p. In Wind Waker, F-Zero GX and Soul Calibur 2, we're getting a native 1280x900 picture with a limited form of anti-aliasing in place, which is then scaled to the maximum 4K output possible on Switch 2. The boosts from the originals native 480p to 900p may not apply to every GameCube title, but it is true of these three at least. Also good news is that widescreen support is now confirmed to be available here as well if it was originally supported in-game. Hence, by adjusting the settings in F-Zero GX or Soul Calibur 2, we're able to remove the black pillars to either side to max out a 16 to 9 display. The catch there is that the 1280 by 900 pixel structure of their default 4 to 3 aspect ratio mode simply stretches across that wider visible window, with no res increase horizontally from 1280. Impressively, we'll even be able to enjoy games like F-Zero GX Online, something that was never possible on the GameCube original. How well Netplay will run in practice remains to be seen, and if lag will be a factor with the game chat integration in place as well. Still, for slower paced games like Zelda Four Swords Adventures, as shown during the Nintendo Treehouse sessions, it looks like an effective way to run through each puzzle with friends. Having all of these GameCube games accessible today is a hugely welcome move. The resolution side is curious though. After all, 1280 by 900 is not as radical an image quality boost as perhaps expected, given that these are 2003 era titles and that the Shield TV pushed to a much higher 1920x1404 for more taxing Wii games. Perhaps it's a concession to allow for background processes like the online play or game chat support, but it is rather conservative given the sheer age of these games and the more advanced and peer-based GPU of the Switch 2. Also, perhaps inevitably, frame rates are locked in place to their original caps, much like we see on the Nvidia Shield TV emulated efforts. Thankfully, F-Zero GX and Soul Calibur 2 already ran at 60fps, but we're still stuck at 30fps in the case of Wind Waker. 
And unfortunately, it does seem that for this 30fps cap, it's unevenly frame paced in spots too, something to watch out for in other 30fps GameCube games. On a final note, Wind Waker's release as a GameCube classic via the Nintendo Online sub is something of a monkey's paw for those who'd rather have gotten Wind Waker HD. The enhanced 2013 Wii U remaster added widescreen support, improved lighting, textures, and added a slew of quality of life improvements that would have been appreciated today. Still, this HD remaster may resurface in some way in the next few years alongside the also missing in action Twilight Princess HD from developer Tantalus Media. For now though, we'll have to wait and see. So, why didn't Nintendo bring these GameCube classics to Switch any sooner? We can only speculate at this point, but a likely theory relates to Switch's CPU limits. While the emulation approach works well on the Shield TV, its Tegra X1 chip runs at a higher 1785MHz CPU clock speed, while Switch's CPU is throttled down to just 1GHz. These are measures taken by Nintendo to manage battery life and heat dissipation on Switch, and are a significant enough factor, potentially, in emulating these games as well as Shield TV. Still, we got there in the end. As long overdue as it is, I'm glad to see these GameCube releases making a return. There's much more to see from the Purple Cube's catalogue on Nintendo Switch 2 beyond this initial smattering of games in the Direct, and we'll be sure to report back on each. The list includes Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, Super Mario Sunshine, Mario Strikers, and Luigi's Mansion, some of which are rather rare these days in their original physical form. For that alone, it's great to see that they're being made so readily accessible, even if perhaps we have to wonder if all this was achievable years ago on the original Switch. But that's all from me today. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video and many more, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But from me for now, thanks for watching.